Welcome to Fishkill United Methodist Church. Have you heard the good news? Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. We are happy to see you this morning. If you're visiting with us, thank you for joining us, both here and online. We offer a special welcome. And for those that are physically in the building, we invite you to sign the guest book in the Northex. That's a fancy area in the back of the church. Our ushers will be glad to help you if you have any questions. If you're joining online, we invite you to light a candle or find a meaningful way to center yourself for this, the most joyous Sunday of all joyous Sundays in the Christian calendar. My name is Tony Mitchell, and I will be leading us through the first part of the worship. We will be using just the red United Methodist hymnal this morning. Throughout the worship service, you may follow along with the prayer, scripture readings, and hymns on the TV screen or in the bulletin. Announcements will be highlighted later in the service, but remember to review the colored inserts. There's all sorts of fun stuff in there that comes in handy during the week. If you have a prayer request, you'll find yellow slips in the front of the pews and fill those out and give them to the ushers at the proper time. If you're joining us online, you may submit a prayer through the chat, uh, live chat, or contact the church office during the week. And now, I invite you to please rise in body and spirit, if you're able, as we begin our worship this morning with the reading of the gospel. Mary, Simon, and John at the empty tomb. This is John, uh, Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. Early on the first day, it was still dark. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then, Mary, uh, then Peter and the other disciple set out and went to the tomb. The two went running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as they yet did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to their homes. Please remain standing if you're able and join with me in the call to worship as seen on the screen or in your bulletin. The dark night is behind us. The morning light erased all darkness and doubt. All that remains is the empty tomb and the wrappings of pain and death. The Lord has risen. He is no longer among the dead. He lives, the Lord has risen. Yes, the Lord lives. The new morning fills our hearts with joy and hope. Let, Let us all worship, worship together, together, extinguishing all doubt and fear with joyful songs and an unbreakable faith in our Redeemer. Please remain standing if you are able and join in the hymn number 302 in the hymnal, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Heaven and earth mean for us say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth. Oh, 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 oh,
Excuse me for a minute. Join with me in the opening prayers found in the screen and in your bulletin. How awesome are your ways, O God. With thanksgiving we offer praise for the work you brought in Christ. In gladness we thank you for hiding us deeply into his sacred life. We bless you for raising us in and with Jesus Christ giving us the power to proclaim with Mary Magdalene, the risen one, not only with our voices, but with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The New Testament reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter three, verses one through four. Hear his words that echo through the ages. So if you have been raised with Christ, Things that seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Invite the children to come forward. Children's time. Good morning. Picture them up. I don't think I was, was I? Okay. Well, good morning. Today's the day. How exciting is it to know that today is the day? It is. Let's begin by telling everyone in here the good news. Jesus is alive. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus is alive! Great job. Great, great job. So, this is such an important day and, and an important message to share with the world. To be honest, it's, it's the most important message that has ever been told. The Bible tells us that after Jesus died on the cross, a woman named Mary went to the tomb where they put Jesus' body. And this wasn't Mary, Jesus' mother, this was a different woman with the same name, Mary. And Jesus was a good friend of Mary's. So she felt very sad when he was dead. Can you make a sad face show how you might have that you were married. You know, sad face. The sad story doesn't end here, though. Something amazing happened. So our folks online might be able to hear. Something else amazing happened when Mary was at the tomb. She met Jesus himself. God had raised Jesus from the dead, and now he was alive. Now, how do you think Mary felt? Show me on your face. How do you think Mary felt? <laughs> so, those faces certainly show how surprised and incredibly happy that Mary was to discover that her friend Jesus was alive. And Mary wanted to tell everyone the message that Jesus was alive. So she ran as excited and fast as she could to tell the disciples this most important news. What is this? It's an egg. Can you guess what might be inside it? Got candy, yolk, anything else? What else might be inside it? Nothing. All right, so those are all really good guesses. So let's see. Um, Who said nothing? Mary Dillinger. So the egg is empty. 
Now, I wonder what you think of when you see an empty Easter egg. What? Someone already ate it? Anything else? (laughs) So, the egg is empty just as the tomb was empty when Mary arrived. This empty egg reminds us that Jesus wasn't still in the tomb. Jesus was alive. I wonder what might have happened had Mary never told anyone the good news about Jesus. Can you show me on your face how you would feel if no one ever told you about Jesus? Right? You would still think he was dead. That's right. So because we do know, we do love Jesus and we can live with him forever in heaven. That's why telling others the good news that Jesus is alive, just as Mary did, is so important. Mary shared the good news of Easter, that Jesus was alive. Do you know how you might be able to share with others that Jesus is alive? How do you you think you might know other ways to share good news? Tell everybody, that's good, yeah. So we're gonna pray, and immediately after our prayer this morning, let's practice telling people the good news of Easter. We're gonna turn around, and just like we did before, we're gonna shout to everybody that Jesus is alive, okay? So once we're done with the prayer, we're gonna tell everybody that Jesus is alive, all right? Let us pray. God of Easter, We give you thanks for the gift of new life and of the good news of the resurrection. Help us to experience the newness and joy that come from the risen Jesus. Amen. All right, now let's tell everybody. Let's tell everybody. Shout. Tell them. Jesus is alive. Tell them. them. You can head back as you tell them. Come on. Good to see you all. The Old Testament reading this morning comes from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 1 through 6. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord loved, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I shall continue my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. And again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when the sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim, come, let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. Let us stand, if you are able, for hymn of preparation number 314 in the garden. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on
please remain standing as you are able for the continuation and completion of our gospel reading this day. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she turned and said to him, uh, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. He said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them all that he had said. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, and merciful God, we give you thanks for this day, the opportunity to come and gather, the opportunity to see your people celebrating your resurrection. I lift up this personal prayer, O Lord, that either through me or in spite of me, your people hear from you this day and always. O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Growing up, from the time I was about nine years old, there was something about Easter morning that was so moving and so powerful for me that even as someone who is not a morning person, I would get up before anyone in the house, bundle up in lots of layers, and wait for my sister to be ready to take me to the town green for the Easter sunrise service that primarily my home church would coordinate, but it was supposed to be hosted by the town's clergy association. Once I started driving, I would leave so early that I would be at the green well before anyone else. And it was often like it was very early this morning, one of the coldest mornings in weeks. But I would park at the green and I would sit in the car until others would arrive. And I would watch the pastor of the congregational church that was set right across the green in my hometown. And every year without fail, the Reverend Scott Morrow would be out in the front lawn of the church, replacing the, shroud, the black shroud that was on the cross with flowers. It was a visual reminder of the transition from grief and mourning to the celebration of life. In our service today, we did not begin with the call to worship, nor did we begin with a choral introit like we have been doing in recent weeks, but we began at the tomb with Mary and Simon Peter and John. Now we have the benefit of 2,000 years of faith traditions and witness and stories, but Mary went to the tomb expecting to find a body in that tomb. She didn't expect that stone to be moved and Jesus' body to be missing. Simon Peter and John did not expect an early morning while it was still dark visit from Mary Magdalene saying that Jesus's tomb was open and was empty. Throughout the three years that they spent in ministry with Jesus, they had heard him talk about his death and resurrection, but this empty tomb was still unexpected for them. Mary was mourning. 
Mary was grieving. She was coming to do what needed to be done to care for Jesus' body. This man who she loved and followed for years was gone, and she had to do something. Though Jesus had shared with all of them about his resurrection, Mary thought, as did the other Jewish people of the day, that it was about the resurrection on the last day. The idea that Jesus would be resurrected in their time was unfathomable to them. While Jesus' followers had heard his words predicting that resurrection, they could not fully understand the implications. From last week's triumphant entry into Jerusalem to today's empty tomb, a lot has happened On Thursday, we talked about Jesus spending intimate, set-apart time with his closest friends and disciples in the upper room. In this time, they shared a meal together, but not until after Jesus had served them all by washing their feet and giving them a new commandment, a new mandate to love one another as he had loved them a command that continues to be our commandment and mandate today, 2,000 years later. This was followed by a betrayal from one of his disciples, an arrest, trial, torture, and death in the most humiliating and intimidating way possible. Jesus of Nazareth, a radical preacher, teacher, and community organizer, an innocent man condemned to death, not because he was rocking the boat among the Jewish people, but because of his message of radical love and generosity that undermined the status quo for the Roman Empire. He was executed for the crime of attempting to rise above his station, that of a poor and lowly Nazarene. He was put to death because he would not abide by the social niceties. He rocked the boat too much. Jesus' life, ministry, death, and resurrection is an expression of God's all-encompassing, transforming, reckless love. It is a love that can move mountains. It is a love that can withstand temptation, a love that compels people to move and act, a love that provides living water, a love that heals any ailment, a love that brings the dead back to life. And it is reckless because it is dangerous to those who hold the power. Jesus is calling us to radical and reckless love. Love that goes beyond doing what is convenient and embraces what is uncomfortable. Throughout his ministry, Jesus set an example of what love looks like. He preached good news to the poor, proclaimed release to the captives, set at liberty all who were oppressed, healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners. Jesus' life and ministry was not only reconciled with all of us, with God. It not only reconciled all of us with God, but it reconciled all of us with one another. In a world where we have visible signs of evil, injustice, oppression, and discrimination, we have a calling, a commandment to step in and put our reputation, privilege, and comfort on the line to help reconcile the people of the world with one another. It is uncomfortable, and it is not easy. As Christ followers, as friends of Jesus, we share in the commandment to be the change that the world needs, to be the change that leads to equitable systemic change, change that breaks down the barriers of slavery, segregation, and Jim Crow that have been placed on our black siblings and are popping up more and more in the news today. Change that seeks reparations for black and indigenous people for colonialist policies that have created generational trauma. Change that finds ways for those seeking refuge and asylum to find safety and security. 
change that provides children of every race and ethnicity with equal and equitable educational opportunities, safe educational opportunities, and provisions of the necessities of life, food, clean water, and stable housing. For this change to take place, there will be those of us who are called to love our fellow human beings enough to lay down the privileges that we have enjoyed throughout our life to ensure that generations after us will have an opportunity and not experience the same disparities, systemic oppression, and to work toward eliminating the harm that is caused by those systems that have perpetuated violence and discrimination against God's people. For those of you who may not know, our denomination, the United Methodist Church, has been involved in a 50-year conflict over human sexuality that is tearing apart a global movement very publicly. While the denomination has been so focused on this conversation, other conversations have taken a back seat. As a denomination, we have neglected the critical conversations around race, gender, ableism, mental health, economic and environmental justice, colonialism and immigration, criminal justice reform. We have been commanded to be our siblings keepers. We may not see the final fruits of the labor that we put in to love one another, but it will be through our actions and our witness and our testimony of love that we can set those up who come after us to continue the work of breaking down systems of oppression and build a society and world built on love, justice, and equity that God has provided for us. A world in which all people are reconciled with one another through the love of God and love of one another. Today we embrace the God of all who does what we cannot imagine because it is reckless in our eyes. God recklessly loves us so that we can recklessly proclaim the gospel in the world. Christ has risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. And now, though it is not in the bulletin, I invite us to turn either to the TV screen or to number 881 in the red hymnal as we join our voices together in affirming our faith in the historic words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
you to turn to your neighbor, those around you, and offer them signs of peace with either a wave, a nod, holding up two fingers in the recognized sign for peace, an elbow bump. Um, greet those around you, and as you do, our ushers will come forward and collect the yellow prayer slips. Let us now turn our hearts and our minds to our Lord in prayer. Gracious, loving, and merciful God, we give you thanks this day for your love, for your power, for your presence. We give you thanks for the beauty of your creation and in particular, the beauty of this day. We give you thanks that when we have these things that weigh on our hearts and minds, we can come before you and lay them at the foot of the cross, knowing that you will take on the weight of those things that trouble us. For we lift up Audrey's friend, Chan Chan, and her husband, Billy, and their newborn baby, who have all been exposed to COVID. We pray that they are protected from that illness, and we pray for a speedy recovery for Chan Chan's sisters who are visiting from India and have become ill with COVID. Lord, in your mercy. We ask for prayers for the Coburn's friends, John and Carol, after several strokes, John passed away this past week, and Carol has been his caretaker for a long time. We pray for strength and peace for this family that has been through so much. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to lift up Pam's friend and neighbor, Pitin, as he starts new chemo, uh, chemo treatments for his lung cancer. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up Barbara, who is beginning radiation treatment 
for cancer this week as she continues to also recover from strokes in the past few months. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up Bob and Joe, who are also receiving cancer treatments. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up the family of Bishop Bickerton as he and his family grieve the passing of his father, James. We pray for the travel that all the family is going to be doing to go to West Virginia for the services over the next couple of days. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as you hear our prayers, we ask that you hear the yearning of our hearts to draw closer to you. As we consider all of these things, as we hear of the tragedies throughout our world, we ask that you be present as we hear of leaders in different countries and the actions that they take, we ask that your voice reign supreme, that the world may come to a time of peace. We lift up the church, Christ's body on earth, that we may be your hands and feet in the world. The world may know who you are through our witness, testimony, love, and actions. All of these things we lift to you, O Lord, knowing that you hear them, knowing that you will hold us close. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time I invite our ushers to come forward for our offering. song. During this song, I will sing the verses, and I invite you to join us on the antiphon or the refrain. Be to God. 
the Lamb who was slain has been gone his reign. I invite you now to turn to page 12 in your hymnal or follow along on the screen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not hurt our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us take a silent moment of confession. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness into his mysterious light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one, one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The breaking of the bread is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The table is set. In the United Methodist Church, we practice an open communion table. That means you do not need to belong to this church or any church in order to partake in the sacrament. We have some gluten-free wafers available um, if needed. Just let us know when you come forward. We have the small cups. When you come forward, you will come at the direction of our ushers and you will come down this aisle here. We ask that you wait at that front pew until the person in front of you has completed taking their elements. As you head back to your seat, you will come across here. You are free to kneel at this railing if you wish to pray. And we ask that you put the small cups on the tray at the end as you head back. Come, partake in the sacrament at the direction of the ushers after our choir partakes. Please be seated.
Let us now join our voices together in our unison prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right. Now we come to our time of announcements. First, I would like to say that I am so grateful to be worshiping with you today. Uh, this is my first Easter with this congregation, and um, it has certainly been a wonderful experience, and I am so grateful for you all. As we turn to our announcements for today, a reminder that we do not have our Bible study tomorrow with the office being closed. I will be away through the next week. Um, our lay leaders and the office will have uh, contact information for the pastors on call, so please uh, call the office or one of the lay leaders for that uh, if there are any pastoral emergencies. Are there any other announcements to share this morning? Lynette, yeah. in two weeks, we have uh, Native American Ministries Sunday, and um, that is a wonderful opportunity to give back to, um, to serve the, the Native Americans in our United Methodist Church Connection. We uh, provide scholarships and, and other resources for United Methodist Native Americans who, um, who are going to school, we provide scholarships for them in particular um, through this fund, as well as doing some other really wonderful things. The pew cards are out or no? Yeah, so you can find more information uh, on the pew cards. There's a QR code and, and be on the lookout for more information about that. That is going to be on the 23rd. Um, are there any other announcements to share with one another this morning? So, note for me about. I, I see this one, but I'm not sure what she wants. The lilies are given today yeah. in honor and glory and memory. And you can find that in your salmon colored insert. And I believe. If you gave a uh, gave a lily, you may take it with you in about twenty minutes when the service is over. Yes, thank you, thank you, Tony. There's a lot going on in my brain. Sure what you for, that's your it doesn't it doesn't tell me anything about what specifically to announce, but that's okay because we work as a team in in the church to uh, make sure we get everything covered. Are there any other announcements to share for the good of the congregation? And I invite you to rise for our closing hymn, He Lives, number 310.
Hear now this benediction. Go gladly into this world raised with Christ, hearts lifted by his love, and live as though dead to all that keeps us from a life hidden from Christ in God. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed.